This is an example of using Athena to solve a simple isothermal batch reactor mass balance. We could certainly solve this analytically, but using Athena for a simple problem helps demonstrate the various steps involved in the solution. So first we use file and open to create a new. Do that. We have a choice. We're going to solve just ordinary differential equations and hit OK. And so now we want to type in some comments. So we're going to do for convenience to just cut and paste. So styrene, butadiene, copolymerization, isothermal batch reactor, the exclamation mark in front of these statements means that their comments are going to be ignored by the calculation. First step in Athena is to indicate which variables we're going to use and make sure they're available for the calculation, so for the program. So the rate constant K, the concentration, styrene, the concentration of butadiene. We want them to be real variables, not integer variables. And then we're going to put in the numerical value of K. Of course, CS and CB are going to be changing. The next is if we hit F11, then it asks for our initial conditions. So the way Athena works is that it uses U as the dependent variables, T as the dependent variable. And so the initial conditions, which are also calculated in the notes, are as follows. So the not a stoichiometric ratio. And so U1 means the concentration of CS. So, so we might want to put a comment here that U1 is identical to CS and U2 is identical to CB. If we hit F11 again, it asks us to actually put in the equations. So the equation is the derivative, in this case, of U1 respect to time is equal to our rate expression. So Athena uses F to correspond to the right side of the differential equation. So minus the rate constant times the concentration of S times the concentration of B and then the derivative for the change in the concentration of component B, butadiene, would be so F2 is equal to derivative. So the stoichiometry is different, 3.2 times rate constant times CS and times CB. And again, we could put a comment in that uh, F1 is F1 equals derivative of U1 with respect to T correspondingly F2. Okay, so this is all we need to solve the problem. So, so well, we need to do a couple other things. First, we want to save program. So, copolymerization, copolymerization, and save that. And then we want to hit F12. So, we've been hitting F11 to get the little headings, if you like. If we'd F12, we do a couple things. Under the general information, we indicate number of equations, two. We see pure differential equation. There's no algebraic equations in this case. So this matrix E, if you like, there's a one in front of the derivative. We also want to go to solution history, two dependent variables, U1 and U2, because what we can do to make, one, to make the program work and to make it easy, instead of using U in rate expressions, we want to use CS and CB the way we've written it. So if we click use variable names in the calculations, then this CS and CB here, it's going to relate them to U1 and U2. So we should be finished. Let's save everything. And now we have to compile. And no errors. It would tell us things like parentheses don't match missing statements, so forth. We 
hit the execute and then we go to this third button in a row which is to do the calculation it gives us table output but we can hit the icon for graph and because we use that solution history to make U1 the same as CS and U2 the same as CB then we can look at the concentrations and something is wrong in our calculation. CS is decreasing, CB is increasing, and there's not much change. So, so let's go back to our program, and there's a couple of things we need to do. One, I left out the minus sign here. That's important. So I have to save again. The other thing is, if we hit F12 again, we notice that we the integration started at zero and went to one. But we want to go to 10, 10 hours, in, I believe, in this case. So click yes. So we have it saved. We have to now compile again. Everything's OK. Build the execution program. That's OK. Run the program. Again, the graphical icon. And if we hold down the control button, we can select two things. Now the behavior is more like what we expect, that their concentrations are decreasing with time since these are both reactants and we're making a polymer. We could, and it might make sense to, if I hit F12 again and said, suppose we ran this for a longer time. So instead of 10, let's make it 60. So number of output points, Let's increase that number. That's just the number that's in, in the plot. It doesn't affect the error and number steps it has to take. So everything's the same. I should be able to run again, look at the graphical output, and plot CS and CB. And now we can see we have more data points, of course, and we're getting down to very low concentrations for CS. And we could certainly go back, just hit graph, and just look at CS concentration and, and see how much is decreasing. So that's an example, simple example of using Athena that, that allows us to solve differential equations uh, relatively easily.